So we've used kinematics to describe motion, and now we're going to talk about why motion happens through Newton's laws of motion. So Newton's first law, often you'll find it in a book and it kind of sounds really weird, like if an object does not interact with other objects, it is possible to identify a reference frame in which the object has zero acceleration. Yeah, that sounds a little too general to make any sense. We physicists do that sometimes. So normally what I would do is dramatically lift the board and show you a better definition. But you know things happen, things break, our boards are broken. To lift it now, I would actually have to, have to have the strength to lift the entire slate board up in the air. And as we'll soon understand with our uh, discussion of forces, I can't possibly do it. Maybe someday I'll show you how, how we really do it. It's broken, I can't lift it, so we're going to do it with a more sort of advanced way. Let's try this. Uh, this is the book's second attempt at a friendly first law. In the absence of external forces and when reviewed from an inertial reference frame, an object at rest remains at rest and an object in motion continues in motion with a constant velocity. That is, with a constant speed in a straight line. So this is still a little much. It sounds a little familiar though. You may have heard object in motion remains. And then what is this? We just did kinematics. You don't have to tell us what velocity is. No, I don't like this one. Again, I can't lift the board. Let's get rid of this one too. That's more like it. This is the one you memorized as a child on your parent's knee. An object in motion remains in motion and an object at rest remains at rest. Since I'm a physicist, I do have to make it a little bit more complicated, not quite at the level we just saw. But let's make it clear, in motion means constant velocity. Like they said in the one definition, that's what in motion means. Um, and an object at rest remains at rest. And we could add a quick clause, might help, unless acted on by an external force. And then it's pretty complete. You apply a force, this won't be true. What is a force? Let's think, a force is a push or pull. That's basically all it is. It's a mathematical description of a push or pull we could make it a little more specific that causes motion unless balanced by other forces. We could say that. By other forces. And we'll get into the math of this pretty soon. But we have to have the balanced part because right now I am under two forces and I'm not moving. I have a constant state of motion, I'm at rest but there's a significant gravitational force pulling me down, but there's a normal force canceling it out. So next we're gonna move on and treat these mathematically with the rest of Newton's laws.